Hello, AP Physics 1. It's Mr. Ng with a short lesson on um, how to use sum of forces. In particular, how to use sum of forces when we have to deal with um, vector components. So here's our first problem. Uh, suppose a friend asks you to examine a 10 kilogram box. So that's good. Our mass is going to be 10.0 kilograms. Uh, hoping to for you to guess what's inside. And you're like, sure, I'll pull this box over to you. She then pulls the box attached by the cord as shown along a smooth surface. Uh, that means there's zero friction. Uh, the magnitude of the force exerted by the person is 40 newtons. That's already the diagram. And it's exerted at, 30, uh, at a 30 degree angle. Calculate the acceleration of the box, that's A, and then the magnitude of the upward force of uh, normal force. Okay, so um, we don't have a lot of information, but typically if we do a free body diagram, it's going to clarify things. So step one, we almost always do a free body diagram. So this is our center of mass, and we know that there's a force of applied here. Um, the book calls it FP for force of the pull. I'm gonna, uh, I would normally just do F of A, it's up to you. And then of course, uh, we still have MG, and then we still have normal force, right? And then these two, the normal force and the MG, they have to cancel out. Great. So calculate A, the acceleration of the box. So really, the acceleration of the box, the box is not moving up and down. We really are only concerned with the box going left and right. So really, um, we're only concerned about um, the sum of forces along the x-axis. Does that make sense? So we no longer have to worry about normal force and mg, at least for now, at least for now. Part B, we gotta do a normal force, but for now, it's just forces along the x, okay? So let's talk about positive forces. We do have this FP, but it's at an angle. So we gotta do something very fancy where we do the component of the force. And if you don't remember, up and down is around, it was about sine. So up and down is FP sine theta. You just have to memorize that. I know some of you still um, feel uncomfortable with it, but just know up and down a sign. That means left and right is gonna be FP cosine theta, right? So um, my force along the X is gonna be FP cosine theta. Um, there's no friction going the other way, so we're done. That's the only X, vac uh, X vector, right? There's no friction because it's on a smooth surface. That's going to equal to M times A. That makes it really easy. To solve for A, A is basically just this thing, FP cosine theta divided by the mass. So I just got to plug in. So that means our acceleration is equal to the force. It's right here, 40 newtons, 40.0 newtons, cosine theta. My theta is 30. And then I'm going to divide that by the mass, and the mass is right here, 10 kilograms. If you plug all that sucker in, uh, you will get an acceleration of 3.46 meters a second squared. Good. Hope that was easy. All I did was did a free body diagram and I plugged in that component, right? That's kind of the, the hardest part about this is kind of knowing this component. So now we just need to know um, the magnitude of the normal force. Ooh, let's go back to that free body diagram. So let's do part B. So when we did that free body diagram, we had this FP, right? We have this... Um, normal force, and then we also have this um, vertical component, FP sine theta. These two, these two forces, I'm going to make them green, these two green vectors have to add up to this here um, purple vector. Does that make sense? So the normal force is actually less than gravity, because those two upward facing vectors. Those two forces up need to cancel out mg, okay? So part B is a little bit more complicated. Um, let's get through it. So let's do some of forces. The two upward forces is my uh, normal force um, and it's added to it the, the vertical component of the force applied. So 
uh, that that sucks, right? So that's going to be like f p to the y. That means the upward. Well, I'm just going to write f p sine theta. That's that's just the vertical component. That's going to minus m g, and that's going to become zero, right? Because it's not moving up and down. It's only moving left and right. So along the y. Um, I could make the sum zero because it's not going off the ground or breaking the table. Good. So to solve for my normal force, it becomes pretty easy. That means normal force is basically um, mg, oops, mg minus fp sine theta. Uh, I, I kind of skipped a few steps, but basically I just move both of these over to that side. So I change the sign here, I change the sign there, and I like doing my positives in front. Good? So I just got to plug in. So that means my normal force is equal to um, 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters a second squared minus F of P, which is 40 newtons, uh, times uh, sine theta which is 30. Good. If you plug all that stuff in you would get the normal force is 75 newtons. Good. So what did I do? The very first step that I did was I did a free body diagram. Twice actually. I did a free body diagram twice. FBD. Next um, I applied my component forces right up and down is um, sine left and right is cosine, and I put that into my sum of forces, I plugged in and solved. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but don't try to think about doing the whole thing at once. Uh, just take it one little step at a time. First do the free body diagram, then try to figure out what are the sums and put in those components, and then you can solve. Okay, next one. Okay, here's another example. Um, a grad student has her car stuck. Find her car stuck in a mud, a bright graduate student of, good, of a good physics course ties a strong rope to the back of the bumper of the car and the other end to a boulder as shown in the figure. Oh, this is very clever. She's going to find that she could really use some mechanical advantage here. Like, if she pulled on the rope directly, she would not be able to move the car. But this is a very clever and old school way to move the car and use the rope as a mechanical advantage. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. She pushes at the midpoint of the rope with her maximum effort which she thinks is going to be around 300 newtons. So this is 300 newtons. The, par the car begins to budge with the rope at an angle shown, right, uh, which is around 5 degrees. And then um, what is the force of pulling on the car? Meaning um, we want to find the tension of the car. All right, not a lot of info, but let's break it down. Let's start with the free body diagram, F, B, D. So um, let's have that point be exactly where she is, right? This is going to be my center of mass for the system. Okay, so here she applies a tension up, right? No, she <laughs> applies a force. This is her force applied, and this is going to be 300 uh, newtons, okay? And then on top of that, um, there is tension between the boulder and the car. This is the car, that's the boulder, and the angle here is 5 degrees. Okay, so this is basically tension. And then here, finally, both of these have components, vertical components of that tension, right, that's going to cancel out F of A. See, this is tension, and then the little green arrows are the vertical components of the tension right t wise so if we do a sum of uh, forces we know that um well my positive force is f a right my force applied minus two of the vertical components of uh, the tension does, it, does that make sense right there's one coming from the car there's one coming from the boulder the rope is has tension on both sides and they're both giving us a vertical component of it. Both of them are giving us a ty. And then um, if you don't recall, let's just go over it. All right, if this is theta and this is t, this is gonna be t sine theta, because it's up and down, 
all right? And then this is going to be T cosine theta down here. And we're going to use T sine theta, all right? Um, and these sums are going to be zero. I know it's zero because this thing says it's just about to budge, just begins to budge, meaning it's right at the zero, almost going to uh, get past zero. If it does start to move, um, then the only way for us to solve this problem is to know the acceleration of the car. But thankfully, it's just about to budge, is just still so we know what the max force is on it, okay? <clears throat> so uh, let's substitute Ty with the um, actual component. So that means F of A minus two times T sine theta is equal to zero, right? That means to solve for T, I would say um, negative two T sine theta is equal to negative FA divided by negative two sine theta, negative two sine theta. That means the tension, meaning the force of the rope on the car, is equal to um, F of A over two sine theta. So let's just solve. My tension is equal to F of A, which is 300 newtons divided by two sine of five. Make sure everything's in uh, parentheses. I did it the first time and I didn't get the right answer because I forgot parentheses. But this time around, you should get around 1721 newtons. Let's see, let's look at sig figs. Got one sig fig. Oh, we should I'd probably only do one sig fig. I don't want to. Uh, I'm gonna do two sig figs. All right, uh, 1700 uh, newtons, right? Because this is a very old school trick to get way more force because if she just pulled it directly, she would need like 2,000 newtons to pull that car. But because she's moving at an angle, she's taking advantage of the component of uh, the component of that force, right? Good. So um, what did I do? I first did a free body diagram. That's number one, free body diagram. And then I did a sum of forces, but I did a sum of forces where I use the component vector. Again, up and down, F sine theta, left and right, F cosine theta. I did some of forces, I did some problem solving, and I was able to solve. Hey, thank you, thank you guys very much for watching.